Hello pilots, welcome to video three in this ProFly OV-10 build series. Um, and what we're gonna be doing today is your control rods and linkages, your control horns, uh, things of that nature. Obviously, again, we're trying to keep these videos as short as possible, so I'm gonna do one. I've already done one here. I've done an aileron. Um, I haven't attached it yet. I still got 30 minute epoxy waiting for that to dry before I finalize it and things like that. But we're gonna do one. We're just gonna do a flap, but basically the same rules are gonna apply for all the other surfaces. So for your two rudders, the only difference there, you'll get longer control rods. And uh, But it's a pretty simple process. It just takes a little time. Again, with an ARF kit, it's not hard to build. It's just time, you know, a little time you're going to need to take. So let's go over some of the tools you're going to need. So first, let's start here. From the kit, I've already used one. Um, the kit is really divided nicely. There are two baggies that are going to have your control rods and your horns. One baggie is going to have what you need for the rudders and the elevator, and then another one has everything you need for the ailerons and the flaps. So you can see I've got three control rods left. I've got three horns. These are nicely made out of fiberglass. I do not like that they're bright green but you know maybe I'll paint them later but not a concern underneath the plane you get a couple little rubber uh, stoppers that's gonna help connect your nice metal uh, linkages these things are awesome um, so you're gonna place those over and that's gonna hold it nice and tight and then you have your um, plastic bits or they're actually kind of like a rubber they really bend really nicely but that's gonna uh, clamp your control rod to the servo arm and just hold it in place now as far as tools you're gonna need for this um, they are recommending epoxy for your control horns. So I've got 30 minute epoxy. I figured I'm not in a rush and in just in case I didn't want it to dry with five minute epoxy. God forbid it dried before I, I needed to move it around. You know, I have some time if I make a mistake if I use the 30 minute. So that's what I went with. Uh, you're going to need two drill bits. I'm using a 1 8 drill bit on my pin vise. And then since it didn't fit, I have a 5 64th drill bit. The 5 64th is what I needed to get the control horn through the servo arm just to open that hole. And then this one, the um, 1 the 1 8 is what I'm going to use on the control horn itself. Uh, that helped me get the clasp through. That was the perfect size that fit there. You just got to open those holes a little bit. You're going to need X-Acto knife to cut into the monocoat to find the spot where the control horn is going to go. You want to use a pencil to mark off the place on your rod because the one thing you're going to need is a vise, a hammer, and some cutters because you're going to have to bend this rod uh, at the very end before you install it. You're going to have to make the bend that's going to go through the servo arm and then cut off the excess. So that's the tools you're going to need for this job and let's get started with the flap. So now, first things first, what I did and you'll see in every one of the holes where the control horns are going to go, you've got to find that little slit. And one thing I noticed is that in, in video two, when we cut open the monocoat for the servo, you're gonna wanna go right in the center of that. And then as long as you've installed your hinges correctly, that hole is gonna be somewhere along a straight line right down the dead center of where the servo is. And you can see here, if you use your nail, you'll feel the little spot. So if you see there, you, can, might, you might be able to see the dent in the uh, monocoat there. So that's where we're gonna wanna cut. So all I did, once I found that spot, take my X-Acto knife and go right in. And then I just open it as wide as I can. And you're gonna notice that it is a perfect snug fit for these control horns. So now what I did was I worked it in and out a bunch of times before I ever bothered to set it in place with epoxy. So let's just do that now. see that it fits nice and flush nice and snug so that's great I'm gonna leave it there for a little while I'm not gonna have to come back to it for a second now the next uh, part in this is going to be let's build out our control rod so you see they give you a nice washer or a nut I'm sorry a nut on the end and of the threaded side and this hole your clasp is perfectly threaded so what I did was move move it back and I twisted it all the way to the point where it starts to come through the middle 
Because again, when you make the bend, you only get one chance at that. You want to make sure you have enough slack. So, you know, if you bend it just a little out of place, you have enough play here where you can go back and forth just to make sure your control surface is where you want it, you know, nice and level. So once you get it out a little bit, then I just roll this nut back up and that's going to keep it where I want it. Now I can't twist it anymore. Perfect. Now I've already got my servo centered from the last time and I still haven't gotten the servo extension so I didn't mount them in yet, but they're, you know, they're mounted to the plate. But now we're gonna make a mark to see where we should bend this uh, troll rod. So I'm gonna go right to where it should be there. I'm gonna be about right here. And I use the pencil just so I can know where my mark is. Perfect. So now I know where I'm going to make my bend, my 190 degree bend, and we're going to put that into our vise. Bring it down. And again, it doesn't have to be, you don't have to be perfect because you gave yourself enough slack when twisting the, uh, when you twisted this, that you can go back and forth from wherever the bend is just to line it up. So then I'm going to take my hammer. And I'm just going to bend it down 90 degrees. Perfect. Look at it. Nice. Loosen it up. Slide her out. There we go. So we got a nice 90 degree bend. And now what I have to do, this is not going to fit in there yet. I'm going to use my 564 drill bit that came with my DeWalt. Uh, series and since I didn't mount the servo down, it'll make it much easier for me. I mounted it to the plate, but again, didn't mount it down there. Let's just drill out that hole. Perfect. And now test it. Perfect. So now you can see, nice and drilled out, but you're going to have a lot of slack that you want to uh, take off later when you put on your clasp. But let's just make sure. All right, I'm gonna put that back where it should be. Put that in, and bang. Now I have enough play in this where I can go however far I need to uh, attach that once I epoxy this. So good. Now one last thing you wanna do on the control horn, your rubber stopper, I found it's much easier to it's impossible to get it over the nut once you have it on. So place this on actually first. Keep it there because you're going to slide that down when you want to lock it in later and then put it on. So just, you know, a little word of advice that I can give based on this. So perfect. So we got control horn basically done, control rod done. On. Let's move that out of the way. And now we're going to get into, we want to epoxy this down. So what I want to do is just again, work it out nice and easy, but I can see that that went in there nicely. And you can see you got a nice, you know, nice flush, flush hole. Perfect. So now when mixing your epoxy, I did this, you know, I'm probably going to do one at a time. So, you know, with the 30 minute epoxy, I have a little just a little piece of wood to mix it together, but I'm just going with two little drops just to show you this one. And then eventually I'll try to do it for all. I'll probably do all the control horns later first before I even do any of the other, the other setups. But when mixing epoxy, our little cards, nice and laminated, perfect, to, perfect for that. That's why we give them to you for free, use them as tools. But I just take, just took the tiniest little drop of my resin and then an equal drop of my hardener and my goodness that smell is absolutely awful i can't i can't whoo i don't mind it's usually like it's one of those smells that just whoo not good so we're gonna mix it together nicely and once i had a mix i left some globs on the end and what i did is sort of just painted it on a little bit because i want it in the corners I obviously want it on the bottom, a little bit on the sides, but I don't want too much excess. I don't want it to, you know, 
I don't want to see bubbles of it coming off my aircraft, but enough to make sure that this thing, once it's hardened, is never pulling out. So, so we dressed her up. And again, I did 30 minutes, so it's not going to harden on me too fast. I could take my time and make sure it goes in. Now that that's in, I'm going to get something to wipe away the excess. Perfect. So now in 30 minutes, that's going to be rock solid and I'll be able to attach my control horn no problem. And the last thing I want to do on this control horn is just open the hole. There we go. Just make sure to open it enough. Beautiful. And that's going to take my clasp. So now I'm going to take my servo back out and now we can sort of finish the job. So putting your control horn back in, uh, control rod back in, and putting the, the snap, you'll see that it fits. Ooh, my fingers, too much coffee this morning. My fingers are shaking. Here we go. <laughs> Motion RC coffee cups, get them while they're hot. Um, bring that around, and it acts like any, you know, any clasp on any foamy you've ever done. Snap it in, and now we're locked in. And I've already measured, obviously know I have enough size, so now we just want to cut off that excess. So, take your cutters, and I went close, but not, not flush. I, I mean, I guess I could do it flush later, but I want to make sure, in case I mess anything up. Whoa, Whoa. nice, look at that, caught it. Well, that's that, and there you have it, guys. That will be, so obviously, once your servo's all done, you know, I could still take that off, but inherently, now, once this is hardened, I will have no problem attaching that, and that'll do it for your control rods and horns and linkages. So, um, guys, you can, again, these steps are going to apply to the rudders. The rudders, the only difference is that control rod they give you is a little bit longer. That's it, but you want to just measure. You'll find the slot on the flap, the aileron, the rudder, and the uh, elevator. So just make that little incision, do exactly the steps here. That's what the manual says for all of them. And then you'll be done and it'll be on to video number four. See you soon.